May the holy names of Jesus and Mary Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God's providence has brought to us this magnificent feast today of the holy name of Jesus Christ. This is the start of the new year. If you follow the gospel, we have two mysteries combined together. In a sense, we have the circumcision and at the same time, the proclamation of the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This feast is kept on the first Sunday in the extraordinary form in this year. Its origin is traced to the 16th century when it was celebrated in the Franciscan order. So it's a feast today, especially celebrated and esteemed by the Marian Franciscans here in Portsmouth. And in the year 1721, Pope Innocent XIII made the keeping of this solemnity universal in the church. The name Jesus, the savior of the world, was brought, as we know by the archangel Gabriel, from God. These are these beautiful mysteries connected through the providence of Almighty God. First, we speak of the circumcision. Here, the Jewish law, the male child passed through the ceremony eight days after birth to mark the covenant between God and Abraham. Jesus, as God and Immaculate, had no need, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to submit himself to the obligations of the Mosaic law. But he chose in humility to start to suffer. We need to mortify our five senses of evil desires and evil inclinations. We need ourselves today, not this external sign of our bond to Christ, but a more internal conversion or interior circumcision, day by day and moment by moment. We need to be cut to the heart as the first pilgrims to Jerusalem were after hearing, as we know, the beautiful words of St. Peter at Pentecost. How can we be cut then to the heart? When we think about this circumcision, well, the best remedy for this new year would be to renew our holy zeal for holy confession. We must try to be generous as possible with relation to the frequency of confession, because this sacrament is not just about the absolution of your sins, but the graces are applied in your confession to the whole mystical body of the church. We must try to live in the present moment well and respond to the inspirations to go to confession, this magnificent sacrament. Do not delay your confession like some souls who put their salvation in jeopardy by waiting months and even years before washing their soul clean with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Do not fall into the grave trap of feigned ignorance. Feigned ignorance, whereby the person does not want to be informed because his lifestyle, the way he lives his life, contradicts the teachings of the Catholic Church, so he convinces himself that it would be better for him not to go to confession or seek the counsel of the priest. Why? Because he does not want to depart from a life of pleasure, of the senses. We all know about original sin, and that actual sin is divided into mortal sin, which kills the soul, the grace in the soul, and venial sin, which weakens the soul. But what about the principle of the consequences of sin? This will be made transparent, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the universal judgment, the consequences of our actions. Let us consider an example then. A young boy reaches the age of reason round about seven or eight years of age normally, and decides to steal a small matchbox car. No big deal, he thinks. What harm can this do? What, what harm can this have? The owner has to pay for insurance, know that, knowing that people will steal from his store. Insurance companies have to form to prepare for the theft, and this all creates little trust amongst fellow human beings and erodes their goodwill. 
Such are the repercussions of a tiny, seemingly insignificant sin. What then, if this little child decided to offer this temptation onto the cross to Jesus Christ crucified? Think of the holy consequences of this sacrifice, which would be to the contrary on the effects mentioned and expand the goodwill among men to do good. Remember, this is the way we have to live our lives to, as your parents said many years ago, to offer it up, offer every action up onto the cross. Saint Francis de Sales in his commentaries begs the faithful to have a deep conversion and circumcision of heart. He says, there are many imprisoned with sensual pleasures. They give money and arms and appear externally as good Christians without dealing with the interior and dominant vice rooted in their hearts. Others, he continues, want to amass great wealth, possessions and comforts. They wear belts of penance and perform many fasts, but neglect. They neglect to uproot the vice to greed and detachment from the world. Others perhaps curb their tongue with great silence, but within they go round and round in their interior grumbling and growling. Let us then in this new year seek to uproot these vices, starting today by calling on with this magnificent feast, the holy name of Jesus Christ our Savior. The child Jesus received his name today, given by Mary and Joseph, foretold by the angels and foreseen from all eternity as our Savior. We know in the Holy Scripture, in St. Luke, at the Annunciation, the Archangel Gabriel, in the dialogue with Our Lady, says, and you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Also, Matthew chapter 1, we also have this dialogue between the angel and St. Joseph in his dream when Joseph was doubting about the pregnancy of Our Lady and what are the words we hear, and she shall bring forth a son whom you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sins. This name is magnificent, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the the name of salvation. The name Jesus is honey to the mouth, sweet song to the ear, joyful delight to the heart, but it is also medicine. Is someone sad among us? We can ask. Let Jesus Christ come into his heart and there leap to his lips. And behold, as the light of his name arises, all clouds pass and cheerfulness returns. Has somebody lapsed into sin? Worse, in despair, pushing him headlong into a trap where death awaits his very soul. Surely, if he invokes the name of life, Jesus Christ, he will be revitalized at once. He humbled himself, Jesus Christ, became, becoming obedient unto death. We read in Philippians chapter 2, even to death on the cross, for which cause God also hath exalted him and hath given him the name which is above all names, that in the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those that are in heaven on earth or under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is in the glory of God the Father. What about, we can ask ourselves, a holy proponent of the holy name of Jesus, a Franciscan, Saint Bernardine of Siena, a great proponent of this holy name, was especially known for his devotion to this great name, and he devised this magnificent symbol of the holy name of Jesus, I-H-S, Jesus Hominum Salvator, Jesus the Savior of Men, using the three Greek letters, I-H-S, or in Greek, Iota, Eta, and Sigma. The name of Jesus, then, is a remedy of all our infirmities. It gives sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, nimbleness to the lame, and speech to those who are mute, and life to those who are spiritually dead. When you feel some suffering, you are yours without neglecting natural remedies, 
have recourse then to the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus is the comfort of those who suffer. The name of Jesus is the glory of those who believe. The name of Jesus is the torch of the word of God. The name of Jesus Christ is the help of every weary soul. And the name of Jesus is the glory of the blessed in heaven. In conclusion, therefore, there is a beautiful link between the circumcision. Remember, Jesus Christ shed his blood, his most precious blood, seven times in his life, the first time in his circumcision. This beautiful link between the circumcision and the loss of his first blood with the name, the holy name of Jesus. We have the blood spilled at the naming of Jesus our Savior, the blood and redemption lead then to our salvation from Christ. We also see a beautiful link with these two mysteries in the holiness of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Was she not the one there to collect the first precious drops of blood of the Savior in the grotto at Bethlehem? His first blood spilled for mankind, and was it not her who went 2021 to Jesus Christ through Mary, asking him grace to live this year in a holy manner for the welfare of your soul. Make this New Year resolution to always ponder the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who shed each and every drop of his most precious blood for my and your sins, starting at the circumcision as a little baby. Be of good cheer as followers of Christ. Do not let the oppressions of the world burden you in these times when the mystical body of the church, you and me, must mount the tree of life at Calvary to share in the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior. Cover yourself then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the most precious blood and call upon the most delightful and sweet names of Jesus and Mary to chase away the evil one. Choose well in life. Choose well in life, choose the holy names of Jesus and Mary. If these names are on your lips, then rest assured they are embedded in your hearts. Cover yourselves with this most precious blood to drive away the devil and his snares. Ponder well the mystery of love so that we always have in life and at the moment of death, the most sweet names of Jesus and Mary in our hearts and on our lips and thus fly to that place in paradise that eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man, what things God has prepared for them that love him. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.